We've had COVID two plus years. Many, many people, six million people plus have died. A lot, lot more have suffered and suffered really bad. What has humanity learned out of it? Are we becoming a better society? It is the biggest wake up call of our life. What I think I'm really concerned about is that people are going to say, let's go back to normal. Hi everyone, from Round Glass, this is Living with Sunny. I'm your host, Sunny Singh. I'm here with my co-host and friend, Thomas Power. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Today, we're going to have a bit of a different kind of show. We're going to turn the tables a little bit. Um, Thomas will lead the conversation, be the host, and I'll be the guest. Here we go. Take us through your own experience from when you sensed, as you say, our bodies talk to us when, when, when they're going unwell. Take us through your experience from the beginning of when you felt it coming, what it was like, how long it lasted, and how long it took you to sort of push it through and say goodbye to it. Yes, so, you know, I I was, in a way, very fortunate to have avoided COVID till, what, two or three weeks ago. And it's I got... weeks ago. It's literally three plus weeks ago, give or take, you know. But I got it. And uh, I think I caught it at a fundraiser. Uh, lo and behold, the fundraiser was at my home. <laughs> <laughs> it was for our foundation. And here I started feeling, you know, con- my head feeling was feeling congested. Uh, my nose was getting blocked. My throat was a bit sore and I was feeling fatigued. And so I said, man, this, this is like, was like 24 hours after the event. Give or take. Give or take a couple of days. And, and how I said, many guests? How many guests had you had to the event in the house? We had about 60, 65 people. Oh, that's quite a lot. But here we are. You know, we didn't, I didn't even think of it. I said, you know, the world is you know, kind of normal right now. Just like a lot of us are thinking the world is normal. But guess yeah. what? Four or five guests came out with COVID. Here I am. I, ca- I catch it at my own get-together party fundraiser gala. And here I am in a couple of days. I'm feeling a bit drained. And what happens is when I feel drained, I do a number of things very quickly. I start, of course, if it's bad to see the doctor, but I start steaming. I do gargling, uh, uh, salt water gargling. I use turmeric. I do turmeric and ginger shots. You know, I do a neti to clean up my nostrils and my nasal passage. I do a number of very natural good things for well-being. And I start doing all of that and saying, this is not making any dent right now because I think Lucas has advanced. And so, okay, let me just do a test. So I got a test done. And it turned out positive. Well, and this was on this on within the 24 hours of me feeling what I was feeling because I was feeling that I'm I'm not really going recovering. I'm just going down. So I said, let's get the test done. Within a couple of hours, I had the test. I'm positive. I said, okay, I'm quarantining myself in the room. Everybody else, you know, just do what you have to do. I'm in a room. Nobody comes in. You leave the food outside. I'll pick it up. You correspond with me via text or whatever. I need something. I'll let you know. I'm fully quarantined. Now. And how bad were you, you feeling? How bad were you feeling? You know, it lasted my, my, I just wanted to rest. And that rest period, I just wanted to rest, was maybe two to about two and a half days. So I, it was not a bad deal for me. It was not a bad deal for me. So I was not like, oh my God, it's like my body's hurting. No, I just wanted to rest. I didn't want to watch TV. Luckily, I have a lot of sunlight that comes from one side of the room. I want to look outside, which is beautiful. And I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to look at my text or anything like that. What it caused was basically a pause. A pause where, Thomas, the, the biggest awakening for me, the biggest awakening for me was for three days, not a single minute did I think of work. It just didn't come to me. And you know me. I, I'm a thoroughbred when it comes to working. I, I put in the hours. And I, I, whatever I do, I put in the hours. If I'm doing well-being routine, I put in the hours. I work. I'm a thoroughbred when it comes to just putting in the hours, my waking hours into doing something that I find very meaningful. I love what I do. That's why I get lost in it. For not a single minute, my biggest one, my two my biggest observations, for not a single minute I think of work, it put a pause in my life and the things that were important came to my mind. Even when I was highly fatigued, I thought about my father, who's 92. I'm thinking about my son and my daughter. I'm thinking about some of my friends. I'm thinking about my life. I'm just thinking. I'm not paranoid. I'm not worried. I'm not panicking. Oh, my God, I'm going to die. No. 
what was important in my life came to me. It was a pause. Are you telling me, Sonny, that you didn't even think about me? Well, Thomas, you know how honest I am? No. <laughs> and I tell you, it, it is, you know, it, it doesn't happen that often in my life when I pause. <laughs> you know, you know, it's, uh, and you know, it's, it's when I'm thinking about it, you know, look, People go through a lot of worse case scenarios in COVID. People have, people have been on ventilators, go to hospital, people die, people's loved ones die. It's a lot worse for a lot of people. Yet, just being three days in bed, which was a re and after the third day, I, I kind of wanted to get up a little bit, walk around a little bit in the room, watch some TV or something. Maybe say, okay, let me just see if I want to do some emails and whatnot. Three days. Nothing. How long? How long to get your your full sunny energy back to full speed? How many days? So it took me, I think, about a week because I, then I, I went to overdrive with my steaming, my gargling, my my nethi, um, my my ginger turmeric shots because you know those things that that suit my body. I do it on a regular basis. I'm not allergic to any of them, so I did a lot of that on a very regular basis. Gave myself a lot of rest. I took some medicines on my doctor's advice. Uh, and I, I think the, the, the most important thing was to, to just let the body completely focus on saying, I'm with you. I'm going to get you back to health and to wellness. And it took me five days. And by the fifth day, I was saying, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. Maybe a couple of days after that to kind of come to more normal steam, did my test, came out negative. I said, okay. Let's 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 get back to a normal routine, and um, but yeah, for about a week to six days. But the first two two and a half days were where I just wanted to rest. Okay, so tell me, let me dig into that. You 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 thought about your father. He's ninety two. You thought about your son and your daughter. What um, what were your thoughts? Any nuggets? Any breakthroughs? Or just sort of acceptance? What was the what was the discovery? I think what, you know, what came to me was I'm one lucky person. I got a dad who's 92 and knock on wood in good health. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a very spiritual saintly person, right? People just love him. His energy is absolutely infectious. He's spiritual said, and saintly. So he didn't pass any of those gifts to you then. Um, yeah, but, but I'm still young. Um, I, I have a lot of years ahead of me, so don't count me out right now, Thomas. It's uh, um, <laughs> but to be to, to truth be told, my friends love and prefer my dad over me any day. Oh, of the week. And it's a known fact. It's a known fact. But here, I, here I, I thought about my dad and saying, well, how blessed I am to have a dad like him. Right? He is a he is a ultimate perfect role model right he's a perfect role model he cares for people and when he when you're with him the only thing matters to him is you he has all the time in the world and the focus and attention just on you you feel like he just is there for you well, how special is that i thought about my kids and saying how blessed i am to have wonderful kids how blessed i am to have some good friends how blessed i am to just have a body that works how blessed i am that i can think I was saying, I'm a happy guy. You know, I was happy in bed. <laughs> I was feeling happiness. Can you believe it? I'm fatigued, but that's more of a physical thing, right? But I was a happy guy. So you were happily fatigued. Happy. Tell me, I, I think that was, that was part of my antidote, right? It's like, I'm feeling so good that, look, you know, there's so many things around me and I should count my blessings. I should grab that happiness because I always believe happiness is in you and around you. You just have to find an opportunity and focus to just grab it. You don't have to chase happiness or joy in your life at all. It is always there. This is the pause that everybody needs to have in life every so often. Not have COVID, not fall ill, but a pause we should deliberately introduce in our lives and saying, it's like when people say we're going on vacation, the vacation is a pause, but we don't make the vacation into a pause. We bring everything else and all the distractions into it, right? Everybody, I think, in life, every so often, should pause. You can have a you can have a micro pause every weekend and saying this half an hour, I'm just going to sit 
and I will let just whatever happens, happens. And I'm just going to just saying the world is perfect. I am perfect. I am blessed. What comes to me? And then I spend some time more than usual, a lot more than usual, implementing what came to me, talking to my father, talking to my kids. You know, um, we took a trip after that, my son and I, um, to Europe for a week, for four days. So a lot of just kind of, and even when I was traveling with my son, he was like, I said, wow, I'm traveling with my son. We're having quality time. We're having great conversations. And he's opening about things that he doesn't usually. And I'm opening up to him about things I usually don't talk because of time or whatever. And we came back more bonded than I otherwise would have been. But we leveled with each other. My son is saying, dad, I'm missing you. Even while I was saying, you know, give me a hug before I go to bed. Oh, that's lovely. How old is your son? 15. Oh, that's lovely. But look, Sonny, we you know six million people have died over the last two years. This is this is a pretty brutal killer. Yet for you, it seems to have been a pleasurable experience, which is not kind of what happened. You know, I, I've had um, distant relatives and people I know who have passed away because of COVID. And my take is what nobody what death and suffering. Nobody wants that for anybody. You don't want it for yourself. You don't want it for your loved ones. You don't want it for anybody. And I don't want anybody to suffer. But the question is this, Thomas, we've had COVID two plus years, many, many people, 6 million people plus have died. A lot, lot more have suffered and suffered really bad. And some have been handicapped because of that. How has humanity, what has humanity learned out of it? Yeah, well, How have we become better as humanity, as human beings? And that is what rubs me, is that are we becoming a better society? Are we becoming a better humanity? Are we becoming a better human being? because of the curveball life had thrown to us called COVID, right? It is the biggest wake-up call of our life, of our generation. Are we learning from it or is it back to usual? And my, 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 what, what I think I'm really concerned about is that people are going to say, let's go back to normal. It's almost like, you know, what could happen over 20 years happened in two. What can happen in 40 years too happened in two. It was a concentrated blow to you. But our modern lifestyle is not no different from what COVID is doing to you. We are frying ourselves one degree at a time. Our mental fatigue, our relationships, you know, how we look at society, the disparity. Look at the planet. We are, we are destroying ourselves, society and planet. I don't want to sound a pessimist, but I'm saying one degree at a time, we are frying everything from self to relationships, to society at large, to the planet. We got to stop that frying and look back and saying, is any of this worth it? What is truly relevant to us, germane to us, so that we all are happy people, we live happy, and everything thrives. We thrive, things around us thrive. Can we have an environment, whether it's work or personal, professional, that things thrive? Can we learn from COVID to make that world of thriving possible? Okay, so let's talk about the second pandemic, what's, what's often referred to as the second pandemic, the mental health crisis as a result of the lockdown, the, the loneliness, the isolation, the depression, the suicidal thoughts, the actual suicides. What's, what's your view about this, this sort of global mental health crisis which is now on government agendas, boardroom agendas worldwide. So Thomas, um, uh, first a disclaimer that look, if you're, f if you're suffering from mental health, uh, get the help required, you know, whether it's a doctor or a nurse or whatever, get medical help because you never know and one can't know what state of mental unwellness, unbeing, unwellbeing you are in. You know, you could be in severe depression, suicidal, etc. So first thing is make sure, get help, if you feel you're at a stage where you need help, or even if you have an inkling you need help. That being said, here's my simple statement. Holistic well-being is the silver bullet solution, long-term transformative for all the ills in the world. It should be taught in schools. It should be taught in colleges. It should be incorporated into corporates as part of the cultural underpinning and people development. It should be available. The faculties, the tools, the teachers should be available to them. The curriculum should be available to them. And 10, 15 years from now, you will see a society that will be totally different because we will be at harmony with everybody and saying, I'm going to be the best I can and I want to win my race. Thomas, I want you to win your race. 
It's not that I have to win my race in, for you, for your, in order for me to win a race, you have to lose the race. No, no, no. We can both win the race. You developed these skills before the pandemic. You, you had the holistic well-being skills. You have an organization, a belief system, a value system. Because you went into the pandemic with those skills, was the pandemic a cruise for you? Or how did it how did it actually change you? Or did it not change you at all? I think the COVID was the best thing that happened uh, from my perspective, for my life. When COVID came about, you know, yes, I was not meeting my friends, but I took the time to just level with myself. I used to go for walks. I had a nice forest, mini forest next to my house. I used to go in the trails. I played with my dogs. I talked more to my friends uh, than I otherwise would. I did things where in a normal scheme of things, I would be a bit more lost. And for a lot of people, very lost because there's a constant chase of the next meeting and the and the next title and buying a new car, a new house, et cetera, et cetera. I had a lot less of that, that, that kind of desires, but COVID kind of said, wow, I can breathe. When you talk about this phrase, you said you, you leveled with yourself. You went out walking, you went into the forest and you leveled with yourself. What what was your inner voice saying to you or what were you saying to your inner voice? The emotion that I feel, that the emotional state of being I was in was that of thank you. I feel in harmony. I feel calm. I feel blessed. I hope humanity learns from it. So if we were to summarize then, what, what would you say are the top three things? Because people can only remember three things. What are the top three things COVID taught you? Number one, think, make, make this thought come to you. If you had 48 hours to live, what would you do? Let that be the start of your living, your well-being, your living through well-being, number one. Number two, don't think too much, act. Number three, don't forget that experience thing is i find myself agreeing with you a lot that covid was very good for resetting or rebuilding the planet and i don't want to like you uh, dismiss six million people who died uh, for that reason but i think the world has positively reset as a result of covid um not just the technology but i think people have got a better perspective on their life. And I do think more people are considering their well being and starting to enter the thought of what is holistic well being. It's been very inspiring for me and it's been a, an honor and a pleasure to work with you this last now uh, 13 months. You know, time flies, time flies, and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon in London. And Thomas, thank you for reversing the roles today and being the moderator of the conversation and letting me be your guest. I thank you for that. And to our audience, thank you for listening to our show. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. Thank you and see you next time.